Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. So today I'm actually going to be reacting to one reason why so many people get sick and I'm just eager to see what this video is about, especially with what's going on right now in the world. So yeah, big shout out to everyone that's been supporting us throughout this journey. We appreciate you guys. Without wasting time, let's get into the video. As for sickness and health, these are attributes of temperament and humors. It's the influence because we believe in a hylomorphic body. You know, we, we actually believe that the body and the soul, we're not, we're not Cartesian. We don't believe in this separation uh, of the ghost in the machine. We actually believe that there is a profound relationship, which is why our worship is in the body. This is why we believe in the bodily resurrection. So the, the body is very important to us, and taking care of the body is important to us. And the body will affect the soul, and the soul in turn also will affect the body. So this, these are important uh, points about that. And this is why traditionally the, the ulama were also doctors. They studied the humors, they understood people, they, they studied psychology. It was very important uh, for them to understand uh, the nature. Much of the sickness that we see today, the depression that people have, is because they, they're too connected to all these machines all the time, and which are having a negative effect on people. And because, don't forget, those are radiation, there's vibrations coming out, they're, they're affecting the brain, and the brain synchronizes with them. Um, and then people don't go out in nature anymore, they don't look at nature, they don't experience nature, they don't breathe properly, they don't exercise, all of these things have a, an effect on us. And so a lot of people are actually very depressed simply because they're, they're not taking care of their bodies. There's a lot of people sick for that reason. And that's why it's very important in our tradition to take care of the body. And you know, health problems are in increasing. People are being diagnosed with more and more illnesses every year. And it's interesting that people are getting sick from eating. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created food so that we can get nutrients out of it, so it can improve our health, so it can give us energy. So how can it be that something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on earth to improve our health is actually damaging our health. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna li jasidika Your body has a right over you. Now the amazing thing is this is an age of miracles and wonders and one of the fascinating things of this time is they have determined exactly what the haq of your body is. Exactly what it is down to the calories that you actually need to consume every day. Right? And if you look at the amount of calories that you need to consume, you'll see that it's pretty much uh, coherent with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Most people eat about three times to four times more than they actually need as fuel to burn uh, energy. In Surah Al-A'raf in the Quran, verse number 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of the verse says, وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ And eat and drink and do not go in excess. Verily, Allah does not love those who excess, overdo it. Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he comments about this verse, and he says, all of a person's health, good health, are in these few divine words. So that means then, perhaps the first problem is how much we're eating. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not design our bodies to consume all the kinds of food and the amounts of food that we're consuming right now. For example, biologically, you only need to eat meat once a week. Your body does not need meat more than once a week. And uh, I believe in eating as pure food as possible. I think Muslims should be semi-vegetarian because I think the Prophet ﷺ actually did not eat a lot of meat. During the khilaf of Umar, عنه, he forbade meat to be eaten two days in a row. But we eat meat every single day of the week and sometimes more than once a day. And we're offended if there's no meat at the table. So what happens? We were not designed to consume so much meat. And the result of this overconsumption, we get all kinds of illnesses. We know that that food was uh, brought from, uh, from Persia that was sweet. It was like baklava. And Omar said, when he was given it, he said, Akullul muslimin ya'kuluna hada 
do all the Muslims eat this? And they said, no, only the rich eat it. And he said, إِذَنْ لَا أُرِيدُهُ حَتَّى يَأْكُلَهَا عَمَّةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Then I don't want to eat it until all the Muslims are eating it. And so really part of shafaqah to this ummah is, is recognizing there's a lot of our Muslim brothers and sisters that don't eat very well. And so we should be really thinking about the weight that we're gaining. It's bad for you, first of all, that any physician will tell you that. Uh, you don't need two cents worth of brains to realize that overeating is not a good thing. In fact, according to the National Institute of Health in America, 80% of American diseases are from overeating. And the other thing is exercise. The Prophet ﷺ exercised. We know that. He actually exercised. And he said that your body has a right. And they used to walk everywhere. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ had a flat stomach according to hadith. And he didn't like fat stomachs. And he used to say to people, هَذَا كَانَ خَيْرًا لَوْ كَانَ فِي غَيْرِكَ This thing that you're carrying around, this extra weight, would look a lot better on somebody else. In other words, that fat that you've got would look better on a skinny person that needs to gain some weight. And Omar, in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, there's two hadiths about meat. And both of them are warnings about meat. One of them says, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْلَحْمْ فَإِنَّ لَهُ الدَّرَاوَةَ كَالدَّرَاوَةَ الْخَمَرَ Beware of meat because it has the addiction, like the addiction of wine. And I recommend for people to read two books if they really want to understand this stuff because it's totally coherent with the Sunnah. One of them is called Diet for a New American. America by John Robbins, which is an analysis of the meat industry and the wretched things that they do to animals because we are against the uh, mistreatment of animals. We have to have humane treatment of animals. Part of the ihsan of killing an animal is that you sharpen the knife, that you don't sharpen it in front of the animal, that you give the animal water before you actually sacrifice it, that you don't drag it to where you're going to sacrifice it, you lead it gently, that you don't show it the knife until the last minute when you pull it out quickly. I mean, those are all part of our sunnah that you'll find in the books of fiqh. And now if you go look how they treat animals, it's wretched. And you're eating, that meat that you're eating has part of that reality invested in it. Really. Part of the torture that goes into all those animals, that's part of what people are eating. All that fear and that adrenaline that those animals release constantly into their flesh. That's part of what the people are eating. And that's why everybody's in this state of fear and anxiety. So people should think about that. And the other one, Omar said, Every time you get hungry, you go out and buy meat. And the man said, Naam, ya Amir al -Mu'mineen. And he said, it would be better if you would uh, stop buying, eating so much meat and allow other brothers to eat. Now part of the thing, if you look at, it takes to make one pound of meat, it takes seven pounds of grain. And there's people starving all over the world. So part of this uh, beef eating uh, Anglo-Saxon culture that's being spread all over the world which is cow, beef and McDonald's in every country. I mean part of the end of time is McDonald's in Mecca and that's not a joke. That's a horrific thing to realize that there is a McDonald's now in Mecca. The most, the holiest place on earth and this sick and disgusting multinational corporation that feeds people pulp. Really gross, grotesque food that has no nutritional value at all. No nutritional value. You're be better off eating the cardboard that that stuff comes in. And, and that's true. That it's all meat fulfilled with hormones. You know, people in Puerto Rico, they had all these women at the age of six years old developing huge breasts because they were using so much hormones in the meat, uh, the estrogen, to, to beef up the cattle. That's what they do. So people becoming homosexuals, well, maybe it's all that hormone meat they're eating, you know? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned this in a hadith. The human being, son of Adam, has not filled any vessel. There's no container that you can fill worse than your stomach. Meaning, the worst thing you can fill is your stomach. Hasbu ibn Adam luqaymat yuqimna sulbah. Sufficient for the son of Adam are a few bites to sustain him. Just a few bites to keep you going. Fa'in kana wala bud. If there's no other way and you have to, then fathuluthun so then a third for your food, then a third for your drink, and then a third for the air. So the hadith is mentioning this as the maximum that you can do. The maximum you can do. We mention it as if it's the minimum. Yeah, just start with that. No, that's the end. If you have to, there's no other way. Is that how much we consume now? Is that how we eat? How many of us today eat just a few bites to keep us going? Basically, you eat to remain alive. You eat to live. But what happens? We live to eat. All we talk about is cuisine and watch cooking shows and watch eating shows and eating competitions. It's just about eating, eating, eating. 
and this is not how much we were, we were intended to consume, it's too much. And so as a result of that, all kinds of illnesses arise. We're supposed to consume just a little bit to contain us. But we eat so much and if there is just a little bit of air left in our stomach, we become uncomfortable. And we search everywhere for a grape, a banana, something to fill that little gap with. We get ill because we overdo the amounts of food that we eat. You know, now there is an increase in people that are being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And it tells you that one out of every three children will be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. How do you get type 2 diabetes? Type 1, we all know it. Type 1, where basically your immune system destroys the beta cells. These are the cells in your pancreas that create insulin, produce insulin. Type 1 diabetes, your body destroys these cells. In type 2, these cells are overworked and fatigued and that's why they die off. Beta cells, that create insulin. So basically, when you consume any amount of food, glucose goes into your bloodstream. That's the energy from this food in the form of glucose. It goes into your bloodstream. Once glucose is in your bloodstream, now it needs to leave the bloodstream and go into your muscles, to the muscle tissue. But it can't do that without insulin. So the minute there's glucose in your bloodstream, the, 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 the pancreas basically starts to produce insulin. Insulin allows glucose to pass from your bloodstream into the muscles, so it's stored there for energy. So then these beta cells that produce the insulin in the pancreas, they start to die off because they're overworked and they're fatigued. What causes them to be overworked and fatigued? How many times and how often is glucose just running through our veins? Constantly, almost all the time. So how much sugar are we consuming? Allah Azza wa did He design our pancreas to consume and to handle so much sugar? When you drink just a small can of Coke, how much sugar is in that? 39 grams. Okay, first of all, in America at least, we don't use grams. So why is the sugar mentioned in grams? Because people don't understand grams, so they don't know how much is in there. 39 grams in this small can of Coke, that is about seven and a half teaspoons of sugar. And if I put that much in a glass of water, if I just put two, three teaspoons of sugar in a glass of water, would you drink it? It's too much. If I put seven and a half, would you drink it? You know when you go and get the big gulp, it's full of Pepsi or what have you, and you consume it throughout the day, that has like the equivalent of 100 packets of sugar. Imagine you tear up 100 packets of sugar and you fill that big gulp. Would you, cons would you do that? Would you consume that? But we drink, sometimes we replace water with Coke and things like that. It's too much sugar. Our bodies were not designed for that. So perhaps then, that's the first half of the problem. We're eating far too much. We're eating far beyond what we need. And this is causing damage to our body. That's why. Allah designed it to not cause us harm. It's supposed to do good for us, but it's doing bad because we're overdoing the amounts. Allah Azrael did not design our bodies to handle that much. The second possible part of the problem is what we're eating and the problems in what we eat. Either what we're eating is straight up harmful or it's just useless. The truth is, there are two golden rules here, right? Number one, if anything, any food, if a man put their hand into it, it's bad. Just that's the general rule. Whatever people, human beings have meddled with, it's bad. In some way or another, or in the long term. The other thing is that nobody cares about you. Nobody. Not the government, not the Food and Drug Administration, not the medical industry. Nobody cares about you. The only one who cares about you is you, yourself. That's the only one who cares. So you have to watch out for these things. They're not going to warn you. With cattle, we have problems with estrogen. So they give them this female hormone, estrogen, and so the cows gain weight and their meat is tender and soft. But what is the problem with estrogen? Nothing destroys it. If you boil the meat, broil the meat, fry the meat, cook the meat, whatever you do with it, it still remains in the meat. If you milk a cow that's been given estrogen, the estrogen is in the milk. If you make yogurt from that milk, it's in the yogurt. If you make cheese from that milk, it's in the cheese. It's a female hormone that we don't want in our bodies. We're getting more and more of it. Cows now are milked 300 days out of the year. Even when they're pregnant, they're milked. And when they're pregnant, certain components or estrogen type components increased by 33 times in the milk. And they just milk it and then they give it to us. And we consume it. There was a study that was done in 42 countries to see, to find a correlation between dairy consumption and testicular cancer. And they found that the strongest correlation to be in Switzerland and in Denmark, 
where cheese is one of the national foods and people consume a lot of dairy. They found the lowest relationship to be in Algeria, where people don't consume as much dairy products. So you see then problems all over the place. People engineering food, adding things to food, doing crazy things to food. Mercury, fish. You think of fish, you think of mercury. There is always a problem somewhere. And almost none of the processes is natural anymore. Tomatoes, they're picked green. They don't pick them when they're ripe. They pick them when they're green and still hard so they don't go bad. And then they ripen them by putting them in ethane gas. And then that gets them to turn red. So they're not damaged and they look good to you, the consumer. So the answer then, if you can buy organic, eat organic. Decrease the amount of food that you eat. You don't need to eat that much of anything. And if you can grow, of course, grow and be very aware, read, be very conscious of what you're consuming, what you're putting into your bodies. Zakumullah khairan for your attentive listening. Sallallahu alayhi wa barakatuh ala Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This video is actually deeper than what I thought. I wouldn't have guessed or thought that this would be about any of the stuff that's being spoken about. thought it would just tackle maybe food on the surface and exercise on the surface, but it got too real. I mean, I have to agree with this video, but I'm one of those people that can actually eat anything and not gain. Which doesn't mean I'm healthy, it just means, I don't know, maybe I've got a fast metabolism or something. We need to learn how to take care of ourselves and we can only take care of ourselves if we actually care about us. If I care about me, I'll look into what I put into my body. Only then can I say, oh, maybe my friend is having troubles with food, maybe I can help them out. Or maybe my friend is having troubles with this, I can help them out, provided that I've worked it out with myself first. It was, it was, it was a lot of things in this video. Also, where people think, I feel like, Jesse and I were talking about this the other day, I feel like people feel that they're poor when they can't have meat on their table, which is not the case. Maybe you can't afford it, yes, but then you shouldn't beat yourself up when you're eating vegetables that may be healthier than that meat that you crave. Also, it says you can eat meat once in a while, um, once a week. I mean, it really depends on what you want in life. It really does. I myself eat meat. I'm not complaining. But I've also experienced a life where you can't eat meat, which is not bad as well. Things change. Uh, yeah, what you are what you eat. You become what you eat. So if you're eating something unhealthy, you're going to be unhealthy. If you're eating something healthy, you're good. We should really look into some of these things. And when was the last time you went outside and just enjoyed the sun? When was the last time you put down that soda and just enjoyed um, water? I've actually been taking water myself for the past maybe a year now. I've been trying. So every time I go out... I usually order water so that I get you so that I don't have to think it's bad because I remember when I was young I thought water was the worst thing that I could could drink so I always went for soda milk all those things but now I'm just trying to keep up with water and see where life takes me from from here let me know what you there's a lot of things to talk about but let me know what you guys actually think let's have a discussion about this because this was very very interesting Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video. <music>